Hey everyone, welcome to the Hire My VA Team and Business Building Podcast, brought to you by ugozi.com and Victory. In this podcast and at Hire My VA, we help you to reclaim your freedom through hiring and thriving with virtual assistants without breaking the bank. And of course, that means your bank. And as normal, I'm Dave Braun, and I'm here with Larry Broughton, my partner in all things coaching, fantastic business mentor. Larry, you're helping coach me through life all these ups and downs um we're like brothers and all the different yeah. things we're doing just tell everybody hey hey <laughs> i'm still larry hello <laughs> handsome dave how are you i'm doing fantastic i'm doing fantastic wow, well, what a productive we, little meeting we just got done with huh we did there's some exciting yes. things going on i hate meetings but boy when they're productive like that it's like nothing like it Right. Yeah, you know, I think both of us going in when we were talking, we were both a little bit down, I think. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, low energy. A little low energy, and now I think we yeah. picked it up. Yep, there you go. Sometimes having a great meeting conversation with somebody who's a, a great person is better than uh, having a cup of coffee or <laughs> some other kind of <laughs> caffeinated drink, Stimulant. right? Stimulant, yeah. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Well, we've yeah. got a really good question today. Okay. Ready for this one. You make me nervous when you do that. Okay, what is it? <laughs> Bring right. it on, I guess. What is it? All right, here it is. Okay. How do you have tough conversations with your employees? Oh. oh. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? It reminds right. me, we talked about this recently, but I'm going to start with this. I'm going to finish. I, I can see you've got something you want to throw in here. This is one of my favorite topics about how I always say, courage changes everything Ooh, yeah right i get it my friends it takes guts to have difficult conversations whether it's with a team member or an employee or a loved one it takes guts but just imagine your life had you had the courage to have those tough conversations in the past how would your life be different today so go ahead dave i i, I interrupted you i stepped all over you so what were you, what were you gonna say never mind <laughs> his feelings have been hurt suck it up buttercup <laughs> <laughs> okay well um you know one of the things that in this question uh, yeah. you know people given to us and they talk about employees well what do we normally like to tell people that the word to replace that with is team members team members yeah yeah so let, let's do that so yeah. how do you have tough conversations with your team members yeah um all right. Now, Larry, you mentioned a great way to do this. One of our last episodes and, you know, it, as normally on our episodes, we kind of riff back and forth. And this was in um, episode 148. And that one, we answered the question, what do I look for in a business development team and how do I hold them accountable? Right. So it was all about this accountability question. Um, and um, so you described this kind of along the lines of, how do you um, crank up the heat in your conversations? I mean, yeah. how do you start um, cool and get it to like really hot? Yeah. And there was a great analogy that you had where you envisioned this as say a knob on the stove where, you know, you can gradually um, increase the heat, heat settings. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were talking about it um, afterwards and we put um, the link to this, um, um, you know, book in the show notes for that episode and it really is um, the illustrations of an accountability dial, right? Yes. Yep. How do you turn up the heat in the conversation? So the book is um, Good Authority, How to Become the Leader Your Team is Waiting For. And yes. that's by Jonathan Raymond. Yes. But I think it'd be awesome if we went into a little bit more detail because, um, I, I, you know, when we were talking about that, it was just so important. It was a great step-by-step -step approach. And you know, as you know, I'm an engineer. I like step-by-step -step approaches, but I think it will help everybody, right? Yeah. So um, go ahead. All right. So, well, first of all, I'm going to mention this, that um, that mentioned courage, right? Courage changes everything uh, yeah. for, for folks. I get that we're almost programmed um, in life to avoid conflict. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes right and so we get nervous if we're gonna have a tough conversation right but as a reminder first of all let me just power through these really quickly but i'm going to encourage you to go back and listen to this part of the podcast it's probably the last third of the podcast right. uh what was it, 148 mm -hmm. so imagine there's the dial there's the mention right you you got a team member who's just not cutting it and you're passing each other in the hall 
right? It's just a really short little comment. Hey, Dave, I noticed the TPS reports aren't getting in, in time. You know, you might want to, you know, keep an eye on that. Then there's the invitation um, where you say, hey, Dave, um, this really, uh, you've missed this several times. Uh, I think there's a pattern forming here. Are, are you recognizing the same pattern? The, the third phase of that dial, you turn up the heat, is called the conversation, right? And this is like when your spouse or significant other says, hey, we need to have a talk. <laughs> Yeah, that's the tone mm. of, of this conversation, right? Um, the next one is the boundary, yeah. right? That's where it's like you're on medium high at the, at this point, and you have to say, Dave, if we don't get these TPS reports in on time and they're not accurate, we're going to have to consider taking an additional step, whatever that is, written warning, you know, suspension, whatever it is. The limit is the high, mm -hmm. okay where you say, hey, this is your final warning. If this doesn't happen or if this continues to happen, we're going to make a significant change in the organization. But I would say this. I get that it's if you don't take these steps, you're going to be very nervous. If the first time you have a conversation, Dave, with someone who's just not cutting it and you're already at the boundary level, you're going to be fearful. How is this team member going to respond? Because oftentimes we come into this thing a little bit defensive, knowing that we've not done our job as the leader. And so we get a little bit fearful about that, how they're going to respond. But if you start mentioning it early on and you're documenting it along the way, then you have a lot of ground to stand on. Because the next thing is this, you got to plan ahead for this. You got to do your homework and you have to present the facts. It's easy to present the facts when you say, Dave, we've had this conversation here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. Here's the proof that I'm seeing that here's what's happening when your TPS reports don't get done on time or accurately. It's affecting the organization this way. And so by taking these steps that Raymond talks about in his book, which I I, I apologize that I forgot <laughs> where I saw this the first time, but we're making it right now, right? Um, but I really just love this analogy, right? So by having the mention, the invitation, uh, the conversation, you are planning ahead, right? Now, even when it gets to the boundary part, even though the temperature is a little elevated from the mention, you can still remain positive, right? You can still have a positive and productive conversation, conversation with someone when you're speaking to their potential and the potential of the organization. Just because they're not meeting the mark doesn't give you the permission or the authority, or I don't know, yeah, permission probably to be a jerk, yeah, you know, uh, to, to the person or to defame them or speak ill of them. You can still be productive by saying, "Hey, how are things going? Um, how are you feeling? Like things are, you know, going with the team? Um, I see so much potential in you, but this is kind of dragging you down." Um, when we hired you or we brought you into the organization or we promoted you, we saw this happening. I still believe that this can happen if we can hammer this out. You can still be positive. People want to hear good things, but you can still be firm and loving at the same time. You don't mm -hmm. have to be firm and be a jerk. And by being loving doesn't mean that you're being wishy-washy or soft or letting them off the hook, right? Once you have that part down, Dave, you listen to the team member. What do they have to say? And if they're just silent or they zip it or they're getting defensive, this is an opportunity to call them out on it. You don't just walk away and say, oh, that didn't go well. This is an opportunity to say, listen, as a mature leader, I expect that you're going to communicate effectively even during difficult times. Dave, this is not easy for me either to have this difficult conversation with you, but I'm still having it. I'm digging deep into my reservoir of courage to have this conversation with you. I need you to do the same thing. So what's on your mind? How are you feeling right now? What are your thoughts about this? Why do you think that you're not being productive in this area? And then listen, don't let them just, mm, I don't like that you talk to me this way and they cross their arms and pout. This is the time to bring them out mm -hmm. of their shell, right? I'm just trying to go through the process. I'm thinking about when I've had to do this in our organization. When you get up here to this conversation portion, it's time to really develop a, what we call a PIP, a performance improvement plan, 
Will you write up the plan and how you're going to improve over the next 30, 60, or 90 days? Right. Okay. And then within reason, you have to leave your emotions at the door on this. Now, you can be empathetic. So if they say, listen, my spouse was, you know, just died. I always go back to the Stephen Covey <laughs> conversation, right, about where, you know, on the train. You guys have heard this before. Um you know, this guy was letting his kids just go crazy on, on the train in New York and being very disruptive. And Covey called out the father and the father said, oh, yeah, th their mother just died. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. If somebody says something like that, then, yes, you have to be empathetic with them. Right. But this is not a time for you to be crying in front of your team mm -hmm. member. Right. Because you're scared or you're nervous. You still need to have some intestinal fortitude and address that. So try to leave your emotions um, at the door. Dave, one of the things I see a lot of leaders, a mistake that they make, and I'm sorry, I'm just ripping. I'm just trying to get this stuff okay. downloaded, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to do this in the right setting. You have to do this in the right setting. Um, you don't do this in the open bullpen in front of a bunch of other team members, right? Um, this is the second time this guy's name has come up in 24 hours. So this is very interesting. Uh, Tony Shea, the former uh, CEO of Zappos, uh, I had the honor of meeting him several times and then interviewing him for a former company that I had called, called Tools for Success. Uh, I'd interviewed him a couple of times and did a tour of their facility. And um, they had, I think, everything. He had his office in an open bullpen, all open bullpens. They had no offices. I think they had two offices, one where counseling sessions happen and one where they were to meet with their professional coach. Other than that, everybody met out in the open. So you don't criticize in public. You praise in public. You give critique in private, okay? Unless it's kind of on the spot, you know, safety stuff that you know, going on, you know, but you don't have these kind of talks in public. So make sure you've got the right setting. When you get to this conversation stage, conversation boundary and limit stage, Dave, have a witness there. Mm. Don't do this by yourself. Okay. And um, this should not be a subordinate of theirs. Hopefully it's somebody that's, you know, in some kind of HR position if possible. Now I know that probably 80% of the people watch this, they're solopreneurs, right? Have somebody there though with you, okay? Um, and then document this conversations, document the, the performance improvement plan, but make sure and document it. Even if it's sitting there and just writing yourself an email and sending it to you, it can be as simple as that. But if you're more formal and you have personnel jackets, then write it up you know, whatever the policy is in your organization. So if you have things, more, go ahead. I was going to say one of those things, let's keep going on the setting. So um, when you're talking about it virtually, right, you can have it. It's, it's easy to do it from a private um, perspective. But when you say have someone there, should you have another person I on would. that call? I would. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The good thing if you do it, like you and I record our podcast on Zoom, mm -hmm. you can record the podcast. But I would still have someone there. Because it's also another form of accountability, mm. right? That the person just knows, you know, that you're talking. And again, that person's not sitting there and just watching. Hopefully it's someone who's also impacted in the organization, you know, who can offer value. And you're gonna, you need to make sure that you two are on the same. You, this is not a time to play good cop, bad cop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, you don't, you don't do, you don't do that. Um, but in a virtual setting, yes, particularly if you've got virt virtual people like overseas, um, then um, I would you know, just use Zoom or whatever it is. But I would make sure a lot of these folks do these sessions from home. OK, now mm -hmm. I had to have a difficult conversation with someone about a month ago. Right. And all of a sudden I could just say, tell her manner or something. She didn't have headphones on. And I didn't even think anything about it. All of a sudden she typed in a chat and started pointing to, I can't have this conversation. My daughter's here. Oh, yeah. Ugh, and my heart sunk. Yeah. Like, why didn't I ask this beforehand? Are you alone? Can we, can we have a, so what I should have done when I set up the meeting, should, should have said, hey, can we have a private conversation? You know, yeah. but um, I don't know if you notice, I'm always wearing headphones because my daughter can come, can come in or out or whatever it is, right? So, um, so that was a good question though, Dave. Um, but what I was going to say after, you know, documenting the comp, was there something else? 
No, I was going to say, you're, so you're in the right setting, right? So private, the right, right setting, have there, a witness, possible, documenting right. the outcome. Right. Um, then you've got to be consistent in the way that you deliver disciplinary actions in your organization. You don't treat everybody the same, but you treat everybody fairly. Mm -hmm. You have the same performance standards for everyone. Okay. So this takes a little bit of discernment. Okay. If you're saying, hey, satisfactory distribution of your team to, to, to hit a satisfactory um what's the word i'm looking for distribution of your tps reports they got to be 89 percent accurate delivered 100 percent of the time that needs to be for everybody yeah you can't you can't expect yeah. that from this team member and 60 percent from the other team member so you have to be consistent when having these difficult conversations and i'm almost done two things i think to follow up here one is the follow-up you can't have this conversation and then that's the last you hear of it and then you fire them <laughs> afterwards okay if you set up this pip the performance improvement plan you say in there hey we're going to follow up every two weeks we're going to sit down again or we're going to have a quick conversation or every 30 days whatever it is you know and you give them goals they're reaching and you tell them hey you're falling short or you're improving it should never be a secret mm -hmm. it should never be a surprise when you let someone go from your organization okay and then the fine that's it yeah follow up finally is this you need to keep this confidential i should not have a conversation with you dave about your performance and then go tell everyone else in the organization guess what i just gave dave a disciplinary session or a coaching session you know you don't do that you know and you tell them hey this is between us i'm gonna keep this confidential just like you don't know when i go talk to other team members about their performance i'm not gonna be telling them that you and i are talking Let's make it a surprise to them that you show up and all of a sudden these TPS reports are getting done on time. Wouldn't that be a great surprise? So that's kind of just ripping on this, but I think that's how you have a tough conversation with somebody. Awesome. Start with the accountability dial and fill it in with this kind of whatever it was, 10 or 12 other things in between. So even if you are, if, if you, um, Think again about the accountability dial. Even if you're at the point where you're almost like at your limit, you're ready to fire the person, let them go. Don't. You're suggesting go back to the mention. Start at the beginning. Even if you are ready to, mm -hmm. to say no. No, I wouldn't say that. I guess you know it's like anything in leadership. There's gray areas, and so I would say, well, it depends. Yeah. It just depends. Have you had conversations in the past? I'm not saying going back and be easy breezy. I think that if if I were at my wit's end and I'm like ready to do the boundary or the limit, I would have a conversation. Let's just say it's you, Dave. I would say, Dave, um, man, we need to have a tough conversation. I, as a leader, should have had these conversations earlier, but this has been bugging me and other team members for a while, and I would have specific examples of it, right? I should have been communicating with you, but I've not been. And so because of that, we together, we need to develop a plan so that we can nip this in the bud, change correction, change course whatever it is the plan is here now and quickly i'm going to give you my word dave moving forward when there's a performance deficiency i'm going to mention this to you as soon as i start recognizing it because mm -hmm. right now i'm feeling resentful i'm just being honest with you man i'm feeling resentful and my expectation when i give you a project honestly i don't know that you're ever going to hit the goal because you're so inconsistent in these other areas but I know that you've got the potential to do it. Here of all the other successes you had in your career, the time you had with us. But for some reason, this isn't working. And I'm going to apologize to you that I'm being so heavy right now, but this is serious. Okay. And we need to fix this. I know you can do it, particularly if we develop a plan together right now. So I would kind of have that tone about it, but I wouldn't just walk in and ah, easy breezy about it but this is why you have to be consistent as a leader is that if people know that your brand standard is excellence not perfection but excellence in everything that you do then every every day you're saying hey we're falling short a little bit here it's just a mention we can do better than this team come on we can do this right does that make sense yeah yeah it totally makes sense so so really start where you need to start um, start where you need to start right. now it if it has gotten to the point 
Now, in most places in, in the U.S., it's um, they're at-will employees. And so you need to know, are these at-will employees? Are they 1099 virtual assistants located here? Or are they just, you know, virtual assistants overseas? If it is the point where you are lose, losing clients, then you need to make the tough decision, right? I'm going to tell you this. I've got a coaching client that I was on the call with this morning who two weeks ago when we had our call, she was ready to let this person go. We asked a few questions. Have she, has she really been trained properly? Does she really know what your expectations are? Because people can't meet your expectations if they don't know what they are, right? Um, because remember, and I always quote this, folks, so bear with me. 67% of the American workforce is disengaged or actively disengaged. And when you peel back the reasons why, the number one reason is people don't feel like they're being trained or professionally developed by their their supervisors or their managers, right? And so she'd been thinking about this over the last two weeks. And so she, I said, all right, what's our number one topic we're talking about today? And so she said, the person's name. She <laughs> goes, I've been thinking about this and here's where I've fallen short. She's so good in these other areas. My concern is if I let her go without doing X, Y, and Z first, mm -hmm. then I may be making the same mistake the next time around. And it's gonna cost me more money than for me to send this team member to this training, this specific training that's going to help those in, them in this area where I'm feeling frustrated. So the training costs a thousand dollars over a seven week period. So maybe it makes more sense for me to put them through this training period and then set what my expectations are than taking the risk of the turnover. Because keep in mind how costly it is for a turnover. Yeah. Right? It's a lot more than a thousand dollars. For most people, right? Certainly can be, so yeah. she reflected on it. So she's starting where she needs to start. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the ideal is mention, invitation, conversation, boundary, limit, right? But that's the ideal. But start where you need to start, but go back and take responsibility for your own action. I think there are a lot of people, Dave, who would respect a leader who says that, hey, I should have done this. I have fallen short and I'm going to do better in the future. That if you can say as a leader, I can do better, well, what's that telling your team members? I'm not perfect. I don't expect you to be perfect, but I expect you to be better than you are today. Yeah. Okay. It really opens up, it really opens it up for a good conversation too. When you admit that you've fallen short. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Well, yeah. that sounds that that sounds pretty cool. As as you were talking, I was drawing some of this down to get it more in my head, and I encourage people to do that. Yeah. I'm not sharing my screen, but remember, as Larry talked about the dial, you know, mention, invitation, conversation, boundary, and limit. Yeah. And it might help for you guys if you are doing this. If you're listening to this, think about um, a team member that you've got who may be falling a little bit short of your expectations. Where would you start? How would you have that conversation? And then I would encourage you to go back and, um, you know, start with some of Larry's words. Those are some great introductory words that you had. Yeah. Um, so, I really liked it. Yeah. Well, it's very easy to do this if it's a new team member. Right. It's easy to do this with, if it's a new team member because they're, you've, you don't have history with them yet. Right. But I like your comment, Dave, about start where you need to start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other final words on this? I mean, I like how you started out with uh, courage. You know, it takes, it takes courage. Uh, it does take do courage. That. It does take courage. Uh, and do the other key thing you said at the beginning was imagine, I guess, imagine two things. One is if you let this go, what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you have this conversation and it goes well, which, a lot of times it does, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. A lot of times it does. Imagine what's going to happen um, as a result, right, in the future. So many surveys have been done on um, team member um, satisfaction of their leaders. Uh -huh. You know, so many surveys have been, been done on this. What they show is team members want feedback from their managers and leaders. They want to know how they're doing. They don't like living in this, you know, under this question mark. Am I doing well? Am I not doing well? Yeah. Am I in good standing or bad standing? They want to hear from you, right? People generally, most people want to be good performers most of the time. Yeah. You know, in spite of the the big quit, in spite of the, you know, or the 
great resignation or the quiet quit or whatever it is that we're calling it right now. I think most people want to do good most of the time. Yeah. And so you, yeah. it's our job to fill them in. How are they doing? Well, and especially if you're going to follow the directions that we have on when you are hiring people. Yes. Right? Motivation, yeah. integrity, and capacity. You do yeah. all those and do those well. You know, the people that you're going to have work with you, you know, they're going to want to improve. And yeah, they're going to appreciate sure. the conversation, I think. Too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope. I think that's it. All right. That is awesome. Um, so everybody, thank you for joining us today. And remember, building a team is the way to reclaim your freedom. And we're here to help you with our course and community and our white glove service where we find a rock star VA for you. Mm -hmm. So three things we'd love for you to do, and we'd really appreciate it. Number one, subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already done so, either on your iPhone or your Android phone, and then on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button and click on the little bell next to it to get reminders. And then number two, give us a rating, preferably five star, um, or leave a comment below this video, any comment, because it will help us to get the word out and we do respond and we will answer your questions. And then number three, go to hiremyva.com for more information um, on our course and community and our white glove service. Remember, even without experience, you learn how to prepare for, hire, and thrive with virtual assistants. Larry and I have helped lots of folks. We want to help you. Um, we're helping people right now. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. So just go to hiremyva.com for more information. Yeah, and I would just remind folks: courage changes everything, yeah. right? Courage changes everything. In this, one of my little mantras just came to mind. I'm just going to remind folks of this: you can't light a fire with a wet match. OK, <laughs> you have to be an enthusiastic leader. You have to be engaged with, with your team. Right. So I'll leave you with that. God bless you. God keep you. God hold you. All right, my friends, we'll see you next time. Have a great right. day. Bye, Go, get Go get them. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Hire My VA Team and Business Building Podcast. Super. <laughs> 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 Here, I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>